Okay. So well, first of all, welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for the Measure M Park for All Community Meeting. Tonight's meeting will focus on parks, uh, facilities, and amenities across Santa Rosa. We'll begin here in a couple of minutes. I think we're about ready. Um, we just wanna make sure we have enough for the attendees to all have an opportunity to join the meeting and get settled in. Uh, we have Ciamora doing interpretation for us. That's a word on the English channel. We actually have Pablo on the English channel right now and Sayamara is on the Spanish channel. Um, and Pablo will um, interpret your next set of comments, Steve, and then we will move him onto the Spanish channel. Thank you. Great. Okay, so uh, how, uh, so first of all, if you need to participate in the Spanish channel, there's the slide right there that'll show you how to participate. Um, my name is Steve Rom. I'm with Coffee Strong. Um, uh, Coffee Strong is a nonprofit organization that was formed after the fires, the Tubbs fire in 2017. Um, I've been involved since day one. Uh, it's been a long journey to move back in and be uh, Really, uh, our purpose was just to help get our, our fellow community members back into their homes as quickly as possible. That was our mission. Uh, we currently had 1,440 homes in Coffee, in Coffee Park destroyed. We're at about 99%. I think we have about 25 lots that have, don't have any activity on them. So we're really proud of the work that both the neighborhood has done and Coffee Strong has done. And so we've worked with the parks as far as the rebuild of Coffee Park, which we're very proud of. It was a long process. And uh, um, I just can't uh, tell you enough about how our relationship with the parks has been uh, helpful in um, our recovery. Um, uh, so as of tonight, uh, let's see. So um, live Spanish translation is available tonight. Uh, in, interpretation services are being provided by Pablo and Cia Mora uh, and the International Effective Center. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can also join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the zoom bar on your screen. Once you join the Spanish channel, it is recommended that you shut off your main audio so you can clearly hear uh, the Spanish trans interpretation. After interpretation, I will turn the meeting over to Jen Santos, Deputy Director of the Parks, to discuss housekeeping items. Turn the meeting over to Jen Santos, Deputy Director. Thank you, Steve, and hopefully we can get your video working again soon. <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, I also uh, want to take an opportunity to thank our other hosts that you see, or you can't see them, working behind the scenes to get this presentation running, uh, running forward. There's a lot of moving parts in the background. Um, even though this is probably our like eighth or so time we've done this, it does. Um, there are problems occasionally, so we appreciate your patience. But we have um, Emily Ander. Mary Lou Nichols and Tim Bernard from the city staff helping behind the scenes to run the show and interpret um, or bring, bring on the questions and answer periods. And um, we also have Pablo and Ziamora uh, translating for us today. So we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank them. Um, and then I've got a little housekeeping information here for us to read today. So as members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee your microphone will be muted and camera will be off. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. So I am gonna turn it back over to our host now and they're gonna explain how you can participate in these um, today's public comment period.
and then check back in with our hosts. Um, Okay. Emily and Emily will be right with you. If you are calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting for privacy concerns, you will be renamed. Um, so your viewable phone number says caller with the last four digits of your phone number. Near the end of the presentation, Jen will open the floor for questions and answers and public comments. All hands will be lowered until the that portion of the meeting is open. Once Jen has called for public questions or comments, the host will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question or comment related to this presentation. If you are calling in to listen to the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on attendees one by one who have their Zoom hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond to your question. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response received. There is also the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar and typing in your question. The host will monitor these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or will ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the question and public comment periods during the presentation. We ask that those listening on the Spanish channel, but wishing to make a public comment or ask a question to turn off, leave interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called, so you join the main channel to make your public comment heard, and then it will be translated into English. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. I'll turn it back over to um, Jen. Great, thank you, Emily. Let's go ahead and uh, advance to our next slide. Uh, but meanwhile, while that's getting set up, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm the Deputy Director of Parks for the City of Santa Rosa. And I wanted to thank Steve Rahm, although you can't see his picture yet. Um, he is uh, with Coffee Strong as the president of Coffee Strong, an organization, as you mentioned earlier, set up to help folks recover from the fire in the coffee park area. And we're really glad to have him here with us today, um, helping guide us through this and helping to answer questions and facilita facilitate, the, facilitate the meeting. And I also wanted to point out our uh, srcity.org slash parks for all website. If you need to know any information about Measure M uh, or have folks that you know that were not available to attend tonight, they can take the survey that we're gonna to take today, uh, tonight online using that address if needed. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. And what we're gonna talk about tonight overall from an agenda perspective is we're gonna talk about what is Measure M, the big picture, what are we doing with that? What is Measure M? And tonight we're look, taking a citywide look. So we're thankful that you all can join from a citywide perspective. This is not focused on one area of the city, it's uh, inclusive of the entire city. And we'll also be talking about the Measure M priorities and take a survey on and see what your priorities are for us to spend the, the funds on and have a discussion about that. We'll look at what our next steps are. And then of course, we've got that website again for you, uh, the Parks for All website. It's at the Recreation and Parks website. If you um, don't remember that, just go to the Rec and Parks website. It's there for you um, if you have any other questions or can't take the survey tonight or know folks that would like to take the survey. Go to the next slide, please. 
So here's our overview. What is Measure M and, and, and what's it all about? So on November 6, 2018, the voters passed this tax measure uh, with 72.6% support, which is a really great support level uh, for a tax initiative. And what it is is an eighth cent sales tax for 10 years. So when you buy something, um, there's a sales tax associated with that, an eighth of a cent. And the proceeds from this tax are collected annually for 10 years, and they uh, are provided and dedicated to funding Santa Rosa Parks and Recreation needs. Uh, we get a portion, the county collects the tax and we get a portion of that. And our portion is estimated to be 1.9 million annually and about 19.1 million over, over 10 years. And so far that is tracking very close to um, the estimate. The other thing about the tax measure is there is a, a baseline commitment and a fiscal oversight committee made of citizens that are um, taking a look at how we're spending the funds and making sure they're fitting in with the um, requirements of the tax measure. The baseline commitment says that we can use this money to supplement what we do and add to what we do, uh, but we can't use it to fund our budget for what we already do. <laughs> So hopefully that makes some sense. Next slide, please. And so uh, from a time frame perspective, year zero, 2018, you might've noticed the tax happened in 2018, but we didn't actually start collecting the tax until 2019. So um, what happened in 2018 was it was approved by the voters. And so year one and two of funding collection, we took a priority spending plan to the city council and they approved a, the recovery of fire damaged parks and landscapes. And they approved the first two years of funding we would receive from this measure to be used towards recovery of fire damaged parks and landscapes. Um, they also dedicated funding to a deferred maintenance park priority list. And what that means is we're going out into our parks and assessing their condition. And we're coming up with a, a priority list of how we should um, repair those deferred maintenance uh, items that we have in, the, in our parks. And the first two years of funding is also funding what we're doing tonight, our citywide community outreach that we have been doing for over a year now. We had planned to start this, or we did start this last March and uh, got stalled because of COVID. And we took it back up again um, this December, last December and we're finishing it off right now. Uh, so year three, updated priority sets. That's what we're doing now, taking all of this community outreach that we're doing, and we're headed to the Board of Community Services. They are a council appointed board, and they will hear um, a presentation next Wednesday, if any of you are interested in uh, regarding all the data we've collected to date. Um, and we were gonna share that with them and look to receive um, recommendations from the Board of Community Services. Uh, we also plan to take our consultants and uh, deferred maintenance priority list back to the Board of Community Services and Council when that's ready. Uh, hopefully um, the beginning of 2022 that should be ready and we'll return at that point as well. And we will also be updating the priority list at that point again as well. And so years four through 10, we will continue to this process of engaging with the community and narrowing down the projects that are important to us um, as a community. And we will continue to annually provide progress reports to the Board of Community Services and Council and look to Council to approve the expenditures every budget season. And as I mentioned before, we're continually gonna update this plan until we've got, got it where we really do like it. We have some time, we have eight years left in the, in the measure. All right, so next slide. And so what we're doing here is looking at the important keywords in all of the allowable expenditure items. So the parks measure specifically allows for these things, maintenance, improving and developing, creating and expanding, planning and developing, providing recreational programs, 
decreasing fire risks, improving trails along waterways and riparian areas. So those are spe the specific allowable uses per the tax measure. Um, and those correspond to pretty much anything rec and parks. If it's in a park or if it's with recreation, these funds can be put towards that expense. Next slide. And we'll just kind of quickly roll through. Um, I don't know if you're like me, I kind of, it, a visual representation of these things is often better. So here's what we mean when we say maintenance. The actual measure reads maintaining parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experiences. So here's some photos and some ideas of what it looks like with the graffiti and um, trail maintenance and tree maintenance going on. Next slide, please. And so when we talk about improvements and developments, uh, this is what we mean. We've got some parks that you can see there and some uh, baseball fields that need improvement. So um, improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restrooms, picnic areas, and visitors, visitor amenities. Um, this is what we mean by that. Next slide. And here is another allowable use, create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art, and recreational and historical facilities. So we've got the Prince Memorial Greenway, a photo of that, and also the Cancer Survivor Plaza at Fremont Park and Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, one of our historical facilities. So it kind of gives you an idea of what we mean by that. Next slide, please. And the other allowable use is to plan and develop bike paths and trails with connections to schools, community spaces, and regional trails. And we've got a couple examples there for you, that bridge uh, crossing over the creek uh, over to Madrone Elementary and a connection to Annadale Park there, a little space opening so you can get to Annadale Park. Next slide, please. And so another allowable uses is to provide recreational education and health programs for the community. So we've got some photos in there to show you some of the things uh, that we do rec right now in recreation and provide services. So if you're thinking of expanding those, this would be the item that you'd wanna select for a priority. Next slide, please. And so another allowable use is to decrease future fire risk, fuel loads and invasive plants on city owned open space parks. So you can see we do have a pretty hefty volunteer program as well. And um, often our volunteers do a tremendous amount of work in our parks to help us reduce weeds. Um, and so you can see some activity there. And we also have aquatic weeds. <laughs> Next slide, please. And uh, we also, uh, the measure also allows for Im improvement, uh, improving the trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife habitat, and water quality. And one thing I'll point out if you're wondering what a riparian area is, it's essentially an area adjacent to and including the creeks or water body. And so you can see that person near the creek up there, that whole area with all the rocks, all of that is called, is part of the riparian area. And next slide. So before we get too far along, we wanted to also take a moment to look at the funding sources we have now. As you think about how we should spend the tax measure funds, uh, we thought it would be important to talk about what sort of funding sources we have now. And right now we have park development impact fees that are collected when a developer comes in to develop a housing area. They can, uh, there's options they have for providing development impact fees instead of providing park land or park development. Um, so those fees are collected per quadrant, which we'll talk about next. So those are how we fund some of our park projects going forward. The general fund uh, funds the staff associated with um, improvement of those park project related to park development impact fees. And occasionally we get grants. Uh, we do apply for about two or three grants per year. Um, and uh, we are fortunate to have received several grants over the last few years that have been really helpful. 
The recreation program, so if you're part of a recreation program, those programs are all funded through the general fund. We do have um, a tax measure that does fund the neighborhood service portion of programs run by the recreation team, but otherwise it's general funding. And if you've seen our park maintenance teams out there um, or our contracted services for maintenance, it's all funded through the general fund as well. Uh, there is an area of deferred park and recreation maintenance that doesn't have a specific source of funding. So we utilize the best fit for certain projects. Uh, some of those projects, like that last picture of the trail that was splitting, that's a pretty big, that's not just day-to-day -day maintenance, that's a much bigger deferred maintenance project. So that's an example of what we mean there. There's nothing specifically funded for that, uh, but we do um, use a variety of these sources um, to fund those as they come up. And we also, I also wanted to take a moment to kind of give you um, an example of the cost of things. What does it cost to do things in the city? And so for, as an example, um, recently uh, we have a quote to replace a neighborhood playground, uh, one playground that's a five to 12 year old playground and that costs $291,000. So you can get the sense of, of pricing of things. And, um, we have our host with us, Steve Rom, and um, so this might be of interest to him as well. Uh, we had an estimate that it would probably take about $5 million to replace Coffee Park's fire damage and get it back to normal. And to date, we've only spent $4.3 million. Um, that's a five-acre park, but that gives you some sort of perspective of the cost of, of parks. And I will stop there, but we can talk more about that. We wanted to give you just a, a basic sense of that. So let's go to the next slide, please. And so this is um, this is a map from the general fund uh, from the general plan, and it's the park development impact fee zones. But it was also what I was talking about with the quadrants earlier. So we can think of the city as divided into four quadrants or just areas. Um, because we have Highway 101 that goes down the from the top to the bottom of this map, and we have Highway 12 that runs all the way across it from out towards Sebastopol all the way across um, in past Oakmont. And uh, we have divided those uh, so that when we collect park development impact fees, they stay and are used to fund park projects within those quadrants. So it's just a way of thinking and a way of organizing what we do here. And so we've got the Northwest quadrant, quadrant one, and Southwest is quadrant two, et cetera, and so on. So you can kind of get a sense of what's happening there. Uh, the other thing that is interesting about this map is if you take a look at where you think you might live and what quadrant you might live in, uh, because we're gonna roll into community polling in just a minute. And one of the things we like to know is where do you live? Um, it's nice for us to understand that because, again, we do collect fees in these quadrants from developers that develop housing units um, and, and don't provide a park. So that allows us, we take those fees and can build new parks. And those red trees on this map, those are the places where we, uh, in the general plan, there are plan to have additional parks. So with that, I'm going to, let's go to the next slide. And we'll start our community polling. I'm going to turn it over to our hosts again, um, and let me all let me know if you need some help. But otherwise, um, I'm going to turn it over to them to explain to you how to participate in this poll. This is a simple one, so we can all get used to using electronic devices to um, pr participate in the polling. So, with that, I'll turn it back to our hosts. Thanks, Jen. All poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your response. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, etc. If you are participating in the meet meeting via landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll is available on the project website through May 6. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk through the results.
All right, I'm gonna turn it back to our host to go ahead and start the survey. So this is an easy survey. Here we go. <laughs> it should pop up on your screen for you. Um, so this is a survey that you need to scroll all the way down. You can go ahead and start taking the survey anytime. Just click in the answer that best fits what you're looking for. Uh, where do you live is the first question. So that's where those quadrants come in or just the area of town that you live in. Uh, we also have a, um, a selection for if you're outside the city. And question number two, what is your age group? And question three, how often do you visit a city of Santa Rosa Park or recreation facility? And question four, how did you hear about tonight's meeting? So again, you don't need to wait for me, just go ahead and take the survey and fill in the responses. And then as soon as it looks like we have most people uh, participating, we'll show you the results live. It's kind of fun to see. All right, I'm going to check in with our hosts. How are we doing with the uh, polling? We have 12 of 13 reporting, but it's been about 25 seconds since we've had a change in the numbers. So, okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, so hopefully you're all seeing the results now. This is really fun. Where do you live? We've got a lot of folks from the Northwest here and a variety of other folks from other quadrants. What's your age group? Looks like 50 to 65 plus is uh, tied for the most amount of participants. And how often do you visit a city of Santa Rosa or recreation facility? We got 42% at least once a week, which is great to hear. And how did you hear about this meeting, word of mouth, City Connections, Facebook, Coffee Strong Outreach, and other? That's, that's great. I really appreciate that. And you do need to scroll if you want to look at them yourself. OK, go ahead and get started on the rest of the slide presentation. I need a little bit more time to capture the oh. results, please. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. And while we, our hosts are doing that, I did wanna let you know, we do have some attendees from our Board of Community Services here, it looks like. We have our chair, Carol Quant, and uh, board member, Logan Pitts, board member, Pamela Van Helsema, and vice chair, Terry Griffin, from what I can tell so far. And if I've missed somebody, I'm so sorry, it's not, not always able to see everybody's name. Uh, but for those of you that are interested, it's kind of nice. Those are the folks we'll be meeting with next week to present the results. So you're well represented. I'm almost there. Okay. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yes. And I'll explain to everybody behind what's happening behind the scenes is we're trying to capture the results. Um, for, for Zoom, it's really great for the video and et cetera, but not so great for capturing live results. We have to do that a little bit manually. Thank you for waiting, Jen. You can go ahead. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So this is the same map that you saw earlier. And, and we do this just to give you, uh, just to bring you back to the citywide view of things. Um, you can see the green on this map are existing parks. It does include parks that aren't part of the city, such as Annadale State Park and 
uh, Spring Lake and um, Taylor Mountain Regional Park, et cetera, those are all county. Um, but nevertheless, you can get the big picture of, of parks in our city. The red trees on this map, again, are the proposed new parks. In some of these parks, we actually own the land. We haven't been able to develop the park yet, but you can kind of see this gives you a good visual of where the city has already developed and where it needs to develop. And um, you can see in the Southwest, we need more development than in other places that are already developed. So um, definitely look forward to more parks down there. Um, but overall, we have right now 108 parks, different types of parks and over a thousand acres of parkland. So that's the picture. Let's go to the next slide and uh, we can do parks by the numbers. <laughs> so for those of you that like the list type of uh, screen, we can show you this. So uh, citywide community parks, those are our parks that are 20 acres or more. We have 14 community parks and we have 58 neighborhood parks. And there's, you know, there's a reason there's more neighborhood parks because those are expected to be um, close by neighborhood that you can get to pretty quickly. So of course there would be more of those. And we have our special use parks, four of those, which is um, the golf course, the rural cemetery are examples of special use. We have seven recreational centers, 13 open space areas six trail parks and the public gathering areas are Courthouse Square, for instance, and Jeju Way. We have five of those. So overall, 108 parks and 1,032 acres. And we've got a little bit more data for you on the next slide. So this is definitely not an exhaustive list of every park out there, but this kind of gives you a sense of, of what is a community park. So Finley is a community park, a place to play, Southwest Community Park, Skyhawk, those are all community parks. These are bigger 20 acre plus parks. Uh, our neighborhood parks are the smaller parks such as Bear, um, Martin Luther King Jr., Coffee Park, Rinconada Park, etc. Special purpose. Again, it might be surprising to know that part of the Sonoma County Museum is a special purpose park. Uh, we have a lot of recreational centers. Um, Steel Lane Community Center, Ridgeway Swim Center, those are all considered recreational centers. And our open space parks, we have Creekside and Francis Nielsen, our trail parks, Prince Memorial Greenway, Newhall Trail, et cetera. And our public gathering areas, so the City Hall area is also a public gathering area that we maintain in parks. So hopefully that gives you a good, a good overview and we'll get you a little visual now of what we mean. So next slide. This is uh, just a little reminder of our community parks. Um, it's certainly fun for me to look at these signs and recognize we do need a little bit of updating here and there, but to give you a good sense, Howard, Southwest, Youth Community Park, Franklin, those are all large community parks. So we've got a lot going on. Next slide. And so neighborhood parks are smaller parks. So Coffee Park is a neighborhood park. Dutch Floor, Martin Luther King, and Ray Park are all examples of neighborhood parks. Six acres or less usually. Next slide. And so the special purpose parks, we've got the golf course, the museum, Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, and the rural cemetery. Next slide. And so here's an example of our recreation centers. We've got our Church One Tree, the Turk Round Barn, the Finley Community Center, Person Senior Wing, and our Ridgeway Swim Center. Next slide. And open space parks. Here's a good example of some of those. We've got Creekside, Thomas Lake Harris, Skyhawk, and Parker Hill. Next slide. And these are specifically trail parks. Prince Memorial Greenway, Brush Creek, Tree, uh, Creek Trail, and we also have the Santa Rosa Creek Trail as well. As well, we do share that in partnership with Sonoma County Park Parks in some areas. Next slide, please. And of course, our public gathering areas. You've got Courthouse Square and City Hall, and Jeju Way. So let's go to the yeah next slide. So we've got parks per quadrant. Although we're not here to talk about a specific quadrant, this is a citywide meeting. We wanted to still include this information so you can get a good sense, uh, the big picture overall of what we have. If you look at the Northwest 
quadrant, we've got 24 parks, 256 acres, the southwest, 13 parks total, 71 acres, the northeast, we've got 40 parks with 267 acres, and the southeast, 25 parks with 428 acres, and uh, just, uh, just by way of <laughs> explaining why we have so many acres in the southeast, that also includes the golf course out there. So hopefully that gives you a good, a good overview of what's happening citywide. And you do see 13 parks in Southwest, that's because we still have more parks to go. We still have more construction and building of houses and with houses come parks. Next slide, please. And we also wanted to include this slide to talk about what do we mean when we say amenity? What is a park amenity? Here are some really good examples. It's pretty much anything you see in a park is a park amenity, a playground, a boat ramp, a volleyball court, a fly casting pond, community garden, dog park, all of those things are considered amenities. And we've got some photos there for you as well. Next slide. That's right, we're gonna go in for our big polling questions now. So hopefully we've given you a lot of background and information of what's going on. Uh, we are gonna roll into um, a really large poll. There's 10 um, long questions, but they're really important questions. And this is where we're asking you uh, what's important to you and what are your priorities? So we will have a lot of um, silent time while you take the poll and give us your responses. Okay, so hopefully you can all see this and feel free to scroll around and, and look what's important to you. Uh, but we'll go through each of the questions here. So question number one, how satisfied are you with the condition of Santa Rosa Parks? We got not satisfied and mostly satisfied tied at 40% and satisfied at 20%. And question number two, do you feel safe when you visit Santa Rosa Parks? 90% at most of the time and a little 10% uh, at always. And number three, what park features do you use most often? And so it looks like for this, we've got 90% natural areas and then we've got 40% playgrounds, 20% pools and Athletic fields and sports are at 10% and ponds and creeks are at 20%, lakes and creeks. So question four, what are the most important qualities you want in a park? 90% uh, have natural landscaping. And let's see, we've got 50% well-maintained, 40% safety, and we've got 30% ease of access and quiet space and everything else at 20 to 10%. And so question number five, and this is a multiple choice question. What existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? And for this one, we've got 40% at trees and landscaping and 30% with pathways, park access, and site furnishings. And the other items are 20% or under. And so the same question in number six, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? And so we've got 70% hiking trails and we've got 40% restrooms and to 30% for public art and community gardens. And we've got 20% or less for the remainder. Number seven, how often do you have gatherings, events at parks and facilities? This is definitely pre-COVID. Uh, it's 40% uh, rarely and 30% weekly. And we've got the others with 10% or less. So number eight, how could your city of Santa Rosa parks and recreation experience be improved? And we've got more natural parks, 70%, 50% uh, better maintained parks and 20% for the remainder. 
And let's see, number nine, what city of Santa Rosa recreation programs or activities do you currently participate in or have in the past? And so we've got 50% um, at special interest. And we've got, let's see, adult sport leagues, senior center programs, fitness and wellness classes at 30%. Camps, 20%, and events, kids to parks day, fishing in the city, et cetera, at 20%, and other things are at 10% or less. And so uh, number 10 was the priority for how would you like to see Santa Rosa measure in parks for all funding prioritized? And 80% are looking at creating and expanding parks, trails, bikeways, public art and recreation and historic facilities. And we've got two, we've got two others, 10, sharing 10%, it's 10% maintain parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experience. And also 10% for decreasing future fire risks, fuel loads and invasive plants on city owned open space parks. So fantastic, it's really fun to see the variety of, of folks we get uh, with, these, with these meetings and the variety of answers, it's really exciting. I hope you enjoyed looking at the results with all the folks attending tonight. And um, once again, of course, if there's anybody that you know that hasn't been able to attend, please uh, feel free to redirect them to our website and, there, and they can watch the video of this as well as all the other uh, meetings and they can watch the, um, they can also participate in the survey. The survey is exactly the same as it has been. So with that, I'm gonna to turn to our hosts to see if they have been able to collect the data yet or if we need a little bit more time looking at the results. Just a couple more seconds, thank you. Okay. Sure, no problem. So this is uh, a really fun way to look at um, who's in the meeting with you. Um, and definitely as a reminder for those of you that are interested in seeing the results together, uh, we'll have the results from all the previous meetings presented at next week's Board of Community Services meeting. And you can get access to that uh, by looking at the city's website under boards and commissions, and you can navigate your way towards the uh, agendas and meeting minutes and find information about that meeting and how to attend virtually. That information should be available on Friday at the website uh, for our meeting next Wednesday. Thank uh, you, Jen. I've captured it. all the results. Great, okay, let's move forward. So just to give you an indication of our, of our next steps before we roll into our question and answer period. Um, so we are collecting all of our meeting materials and they will be available soon, April 26. And the um, survey will be available until May 6. And again, that's at srcity.org slash forward slash parks for all. So definitely tell your friends and relatives and neighbors <laughs> there's still time to participate in this survey. And uh, what we're doing right now is collecting and analyzing all the survey responses prior to this meeting um, and looking at what we have and presenting that information. And so we will present that at the Board of Community Services meeting, as I mentioned, it's coming up next week, as well as City Council in either June or July as part of their we hope to get it as part of their budget process, but if, if not, it might be a little bit later. And the other thing is, this is definitely not the end of our conversation with the community. We will be continuing to have public meetings and to have targeted meetings to collect information from groups we may not have been able to hear from yet, or if we have a, um, less participation from a particular group, uh, we want to target that and make sure that we're getting a really good, well-rounded information. Uh, so with that, I think we're going to roll into the next slide, which is our question and answer. There we go. And I am going to turn it over to our hosts, and hopefully they can describe how you can participate 
in providing and asking a question or providing a comment. Thank you, Jen. Once Jen calls for public questions or comments, host Nichols will announce that, that anyone wishing to ask a question or comment raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call one by one on those who have raised their Zoom hand. The host will unmute your microphone and ask, and you may ask your question. A courtesy timer of three minutes will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you receive. Okay, I'm going to turn it back and see if we have any questions. If you are participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to make a public comment, please be sure to pause throughout your comment to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your public comment as required by the Brown Act. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may now look like a circle with an E, F in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. Okay, I will move to the next slide and we'll be ready for um, public comment. Okay, do we have any public comments or questions so far? Yes, uh, anyone uh, wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand in Zoom. Currently, we have two speakers. The first is Ann Barber, followed by Mick Oboyarski. Ann, I am enabling your speaking permissions. Do you see the timer? Thank you, yes, I do. Please go ahead and ask your question or uh, provide your comment. Um, my name is Annie Barber. I am the vice president of Coffee Strong. I am, I am here to appeal to you to see if we can get you, the city, to invest some of that money into the maintenance of, of parcels A and B in Coffee Park. Um, it will expand <clears throat> the amount of park area in, in our neighborhood. It's been reinvigorated by us infusing quite a bit of money into it to help our neighborhood recover. And we're just looking for, for you guys to take it over, quite frankly. It's, it's no man's land. And we're hopeful that you can help us facilitate that. And bearing in mind that we do know that you maintain without pulling weeds, but if we could make sure that we have a public group, neighborhood group who comes in and does some of the maintenance um, to help facilitate that, we are more than willing to do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Anne. Our next speaker is Miko Boyarski. Miko, I have enabled your speaking permissions Please state your full name for the record if you so choose, and you can provide your question or comment. So my name is Miko Boyarski. I'm on the board of Coffee Strong, and I'd also like to uh, speak in support of the city incorporating these two little parcels, A and B, into the city park system. I just want to be clear what we're talking about. We're talking about two little strips of land on either side of Hopper, where Hopper meets uh, Coffee Lane. They're about 200 feet long, 50 feet wide. And after the Tubbs fire, they were just reduced to smoking ash. It was a great loss. You can go onto Google Maps and you can see what they looked like. There were pretty flowering shrubs there. They were a beautiful part of, uh, of our neighborhood. 
And so after the fire, we were looking for a way to restore our, our community. So Coffee Strong took over landscaping the park. We've put down a landscaping, we've plants, there are benches on which you can sit. And what's really nice about it, it's, it's an extension of Coffee Park. It's a half a block up the street. And uh, you, know, you can walk up there, you can jog there and you can find a, a bench on which to sit or maybe to tie your sneakers. So we feel it really fits in well with Coffee Park. And this little, these two little parcels of land have taken on great significance for the community. Uh, Christmas, the, the fire was in October and Christmas of that year, people hung up Christmas lights on these two little parcels. And for the first anniversary of the fire, 500 people gathered at these two little parcels where Coffee uh, Lane meets Hopper. So this is, these two little parcels of a kind of, kind of a community center and we're hoping that the city can use Measure M funds. I noticed that 80% of the people on the poll like that idea of creating and expanding parks. And we just like to see the city to take these two little parcels under their wing. Right now they've been abandoned. The developer abandoned them in the 80s. And I talked with Jason, uh, the assistant city manager, and he said that what the city could reasonably be asked to provide is just trash collection and removing tree limbs, just bare maintenance. I think that's all that's required. The community has been maintaining these parcels and we would just love to see these pre uh, preserved uh, for the community in the future. It's just a gathering place for the neighborhood. It enhances the beauty of the neighborhood, I think it'd be an excellent uh, use of Measure M funds. There's tremendous bang for the buck here. We've already improved these properties. There's landscaping there, there are benches. When Google first came into existence, their motto was do no harm. I thought that was a ridiculous motto. You know, they're just, they're making a ton of money. They're not gonna do anything. They're not gonna do any harm. And I just think this is a tremendous opportunity to use these funds to make our community better. To, more, to do more than just do no harm, but to just ensure that these little two little pieces of land are available to the people in Coffee Park uh, for generations to come. All right, thank you, Miko. Our next speaker is Lisa. Lisa, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Fiat and I uh, live in the Skyhawk community and um, really appreciate you putting together this presentation. Um, I'm sure many know that the open space area here was hit very hard in the glass fire. And we lost a lot of beautiful, large, old growth oak trees. Um, portions of the open space area now look very much like a scene out of the Lorax. And it's a real loss to our community. Um, I understand the city needed to act swiftly to remove these trees to protect public safety. Um, but what the city has not done quickly is to remove any number of other scraggly um, trees also left behind. Uh, which are nothing more than a fire hazard at this point. Um, and we're really uh, hoping the city will come back and, and finish remediating the riparian area in the open space area. Um, it's overgrown by blackberry and other fuels that really need to get removed um, for our safety and for the health of the creek. Um, I'm sure there's probably plans in motion for that, and I, I trust the city has very good intentions. Um, but I just wanted to, to speak on behalf of our neighborhood that we're still very hopeful that um, the work in our open space area is not yet complete. Thank you, Lisa, and I will definitely pass that comment on to our park maintenance team who's leading the effort to uh, remove hazardous trees, et cetera, from, from the burned areas up in Skyhawk and uh, pass that along to them. Jen, currently I see no other hands up. So at this time, I'd like to ask the public, are there any other uh, people that would like to ask a question at this time? I'm seeing a hand from RJ Lane. RJ, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, uh, my name is Richard Lane. I'm a, a resident of Coffee Park and 
I've watched, uh, I lost my home and I've watched Coffee Park regrow uh, from the ashes up. And I just wanted to voice as a, just a member of the community of support for what Annie and Miko have said about parcels A and B in Coffee Park. Uh, I've been out there myself with neighbors weeding and uh, any support that we can get uh, from the city and the long-term maintenance of uh, parcels A and B would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that's really all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you, Richard. And I'll turn back to our host, Mary Lou. Is there anybody else with questions or anybody else has any questions we can answer them now or comments? I see no other hands at this time. I have one comment from Arthur Dieck um, in the Q&A feature. And it is, I'm wondering how park development fees are allocated. If development is in south, the Southwest Quadrant, do fees have to remain in the Southwest Quadrant? Also, how is this decision made to require development fees rather than requiring a park? Great, I appreciate that question and so when we when we have somebody developing a housing unit in a quadrant southwest quadrant for example the any fees that are collected um, as part of that project uh, are held in that southwest quadrant area and reused there uh, we we do have the opportunity to combine fees from other areas for something that would be considered uh, a one-time citywide benefit um, uh, you know, something that you can only, you only have one of <laughs> or a couple of. Um, so there are those instances where you can combine funds, but otherwise for the most part, all the funds do stay in the quadrant that they're uh, collected from. And the decision about requiring development fees is um, handled at the planning and economic development department. So really it's just a matter of um, if we can look at including a park on that as part of their parcel, uh, then there's no requirement for fees. So it's a bit of a negotiation, but it's also um, as part of our general plan, um, you can kind of see where generally we need parks by, if you recall back to that map that had all those red trees on it, those are generally the areas where we know we need parks in order to make sure we have the right amount of community parks and the right amount of neighborhood parks. So. Uh, when we get developers coming in close to those areas, we work with them to see what our options are. So it's not an exact science, but hopefully that gives you the, the basic idea. Anything else? Are there any additional questions or comments? That's all that I see in the Q&A feature. And I don't see any raised hands. All right, well, Great, I think we can go ahead and move on to our next part in the presentation. Right there. And so um, essentially we, we wanted to let you know as we did prior that um, this is definitely not the end of the conversation and um, we have some contact information up here. Uh, Emily Ander, our host has been working behind the scenes uh, tonight but in her regular day-to-day, -day, she does do most of the work related to Measure M, thank goodness. Um, and so if you need to contact her for any reason, there's her phone number there, 707-543-3774. And you can always just uh, reach out to Recreation and Parks and we'll be sure to um, connect you uh, to Emily or to myself if you have any additional questions. And of course, don't forget our website. If there's those who have not been able to participate in the survey or if you'd like more information, uh, definitely srcity.org, parks for all. And so we'll go, we can go to the next slide, our last slide. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody for hanging in there on a Thursday night when we're all super busy. I really appreciate you being here. And um, I hope that you'll visit uh, our website, Parks for All. And I also want to say thank you to our hosts and our interpreters and a uh, special thanks to Steve for hosting. And I know we lost his visual there. We had some technical problems in the beginning, but we made it and you're back on. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you and turn it over to you if you had any closing remarks for us. I just want to say thank you and thanks for being invited. And, uh, you know, Measure M is kind of a, 
um, interesting measure because people don't know about it. And so just being educated myself has been wonderful. And, uh, and now you can actually, we can actually, you know, uh, share that with other people to, to take care of, take their part in the survey and be a part of this. So thank you. Okay, great. Well, with that, I will say good night and thank you all. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye.